You're a dishwasher. Wash down these dangerous kitchen knives. This story comes from one of my previous jobs when I was a dishwasher at a local convention center. Because it was a convention center, many different events were held during the weekend nights. The events always involved 300 plus people, and that meant the server team had to wait until they all clear out to start cleaning up everything, and a dishwashing team had to wait for them, which meant our jobs went until 2 or 3 a.m., when our shifts were supposed to end at around 12 or 1 a.m. Most servers understood what we were going through, and were nice enough to clean up huge food scraps off the plates and trays, so all we had to do was just run it through the dishwashing machine once. Now, as dishwashers, we were supposed to wash down pretty much everything except for kitchen knives. Servers used the kitchen knives to cut cakes and cook meat, and it was their job to clean them down. The water that we used to soak kitchenwares got murky really quick, and you can guess how dangerous it was for someone to try and grab sharp knives. I even heard that one of the ex-dishwashers sliced his wrist open almost to the tendon. Plus, the water was really dirty, so any cuts you make on your hands had a high risk of infection. As such, dirty kitchen knives weren't allowed at all in the dishwashing area. It was clearly stated in the company policy book. Almost every server didn't mind washing down the knives, as they were simple tasks and opposed to the number of stuff dishwashers washed down. Enter JCM, the jerk catering manager. He joined our convention center about two months after I started to work there, and he immediately made it clear that he wasn't there to make connections. He was so business oriented and profit focused, making the server team do all of the heavy lifting while he casually talked to the event planners. He was one of those people who smiled and laughed with the guests while going all gung-ho to the servers and even to the dishwashers. We were part of the kitchen staff, which was a separate department from the catering group, meaning JCM had no jurisdiction over us. Many complaints were made from both servers and dishwashers, to which JCM completely denied and said they are just being lazy and don't want to do their job. I have the hardest job of managing both the guests and the staffs. One night, it was particularly busy, and both the servers and dishwashers were busting their asses. It was so busy to the point where we had to wash down the dirty plates twice so they can be used again. I was pretty much the dishwasher team lead, and was running back and forth between the dishwashing area and the behind the curtain area collecting dishes, and managing temporary staffs. I am really not the type to multitask, so I was flustered. JCM comes into the dishwashing area while holding the dirty kitchen knife. Hey, I'm going to need you guys to wash this down. But I thought that was the service job. Well, we are too busy, and I'm going to need this washed down. Do you need it immediately? No. Then why don't you guys just wash it down when everything's settled down? I'm the catering manager here. If I say this needs to get washed down, this gets washed down. And why exactly should we listen to you? Because I'm your boss. No, you're not. Executive Chef Bill is. Just leave it soaking in the water then. If you are the manager, then you should be following the company rules. Did I mention he was swinging a knife around while talking? As in, while pointing at me while standing really close? JCM did not like my response and slammed the knife into one of the waters. I do not want to see that knife brought back. Do it or you're all fired. And he stomped his way out of the kitchen. All of the dishwashers were stunned to what they had just witnessed. I calmly told everyone to wash everything that we were supposed to wash down, except for the knife. In the end, as we were cleaning down everything, I decided to leave the unwashed knife in the pit, as I was told. I told the rest of the dishwashers and the servers to do the same. The next day, I wrote a profound email to my boss, other leadership figures, servers, and a parental company of the convention center. I told him about the shit that went down, how I decided to comply with JCM's violation of the company policy, and if he tried to deny everything, I told him to check the CCTV. It may not have been recorded sounds, but it certainly should have caught him in the act. On my next shift, there was an envelope in my cubby. The envelope contained a letter and a $50 Amazon gift card. The letter stated how grateful the company was to be for standing up to JCM. JCM was given a choice of voluntary leave or face disciplinary actions with termination, and he chose the former. They asked me to accept the gift card as a sign of appreciation, which I did. 
This was an interesting story mainly due to the fact that, like, I work in a kitchen and I've never had a situation where you can't do all of the dishes if you're the dishwasher. I mean, if you get handed a knife, yeah, don't put it in the sink. That's a no-brainer. Put it on the side. Wait till you clean everything, then clean that knife individually on its own and put it in a rack. But that's been my experience with knife handling. However, I can definitely tell you that this manager needed to get fired. There is no good reason to be, one, waving a knife around. That's dangerous. And two, throwing it in a murky water sink. I mean, that's... that. That's the logical part of that. You cannot put knives into murky water. You can't see down there, and you could cut yourself. I mean, that's how it is in the kitchen that I work in right now. If the knife goes in the water, I'll be really upset at you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because I do the dish, I, I wash dishes there. I do, I'm do. i the assistant manager, so I just pretty much do anything and everything that's there. But I know I have a strict rule. Don't throw the effing knife into the water. Damn it. Creative digital agencies are shit shows. I work for a prominent marketing agency, creative digital agency, whatever the fuck you want to call it. We're in one of those big holding groups. Gartner, Magic Quadrant, etc. We win a lot of awards. And truth be told, most of what we do is pretty much bullshit we overcharge our clients for. All agencies are just in the business of selling hours for more money than they paid for them. If quality or job satisfaction slips in, it's okay, as long as it doesn't get in the way of profit. Anyway, just had a hilarious situation play out and needed to share it with someone. Like most agencies, we'll promise clients during the sales pitch that we have the best staff and then once the deal is sealed, we scramble to find contractors who can do the work for a rate low enough for us to maintain margins. Contractors are never well treated but often are well enough paid to make up for it. We've been doing a project for about three years with one client and so our contractors on it are in a bit of a special situation where they've been with the company longer than many of our full-time folks. 11 months is what we're averaging for career longevity. So this one, traffic manager, lady is especially bitchy to contractors. It's her job to find them, but she hates them. Treats them like they all beneath her. Contractors risk a lot to complain, right? So mostly they just cash their checks and put up with her. Someone on the team is a contractor, and honestly, he's been there for about two plus years, and he's an amazing at his job. The client loves him, he's a cornerstone on the project, but the GM of my agency hates this contractor. It's all about money, the only thing GMs give a shit about, and power. The GM hates that this contractor had any power. Once the contractor established himself as an invaluable to the client, my agency offered the contractor a full-time position, but it would have to mean less pay. So the contractor, who had originally asked for a full-time position since he had a family, turned it down, saying it would take a longer-term contract at his original rate. This cut into the GM's margins, so he was pissy, but had no choice but to sign the deal. Agency was still making out like a bandit. We billed the contractor out at $1,600 a day. He charged us $1,300 a day, so plenty of profit. Any given day, we had 50 people working on projects for this client with an overall margin of about 45%, plenty of profit. So, we're completing a major milestone and wanted to set up a little celebrity dinner. But more to the point, our contract with the client is up and the GM wants to renew it. Client was stalling and going through rate negotiation and despite the fact that none of the contractors were getting raises, the GM's line is, we have to increase costs to cover increased salaries every year. Which is true, but he's just doing it just because he wants more money. GMs don't care about staff, so a dinner for about 100 people is where he gets a feign interest until the next contract is signed and he can go back to not caring about any of the details except if the check's clear. Agencies today are never keen on paying for things they don't have to, so it's rare they would foot the bill for a big event. The days of Mad Men are gone. We're limited to two drink tabs. Anyways, we set up a lunch celebration dinner, probably cost around $15,000 in food and drinks. Mind you, we bill about $50,000 a day on this project. So, a drop in the bucket over three years. 
Still, they hate to spend money. GM's pay are almost entirely based on their ability to hit margin goals. This is why we can't have new computers or nice monitors at the agency. Anyways, back to about a month ago. Trying to set up this dinner, I sent out invites and instantly got an email from the traffic manager, who monitors all after hour invites to contractors and all of their emails at all times. And she scolds me for inviting a contractor to a dinner party. She has a long list of reasons, but one, we don't want to pay overtime. And two, we don't want to pay for a dinner for a contractor worth the top two. It's cunty, but a par for the course. I talk with the contractor about it one-on-one, -on -one, and he tells me that they've told him the contract won't be extended past the launch. He's a little down about it, so I remind him that we bake in a three-month out clause into his contract back when they were worried about him leaving. And I asked him if they gave him a three months notice. He said he forgot about the three month out. Says he'll follow up with the traffic manager and sees what she says. A few days later, he then asked me to read an email. He's got a bit of a mischievous look. He had emailed the traffic manager and a GM about three months out. And they told him essentially to fuck off and that they weren't paying him past the end of the month. He had kindly responded, does that mean my contract is void? The GM had said very clearly, paraphrase, Yes, I don't care what the contract says, you're done at the end of the month. So he's out of his contract and is non-complete. Night of the dinner comes, and it's a ghost town. Only our full-time staff are there. None of our clients, staff, or our contractors who weren't invited. In order to get prepaid discount, the agency spent money in advance to the venue buffet style food for 100 people but there's only like 15 of us there the gm and some sales guy and account managers very few people who did actually work showed up because they hate being used as props by the skeezy sales guys nobody from the clients team is there nobody gm is frantically trying to get in touch with someone to figure out what's going on nobody is answering his calls Finally, GM gets through to a sponsor VP from the client's team who responds, Hey man, sorry I can't chat now. I'm out to dinner with the contractor and my staff. You know, the people who made this launch possible? We're having a great time. Also, just wanted to let you know that we love the contractor and we've decided to extend him on the project. And his team of developers and designers will be taking over the support contract. The GM literally threw a plate across the room. There went a few million in billable hours over the next year. The contractor realizing his contract wasn't valid anymore, went and hired up all of the other contractors we had with the experience working on the client's project. While not possible for them to work on the client, no non-compete against them working for the contractor's new boutique agency. They even gave the client a cut rate of $1,500 a day instead of $1,600 and he was able to pay the folks he hired a better rate too since he doesn't care about having such ridiculous margins that only really serve to support salespeople. I heard through the rumor mill he locked in a two year support contract with some ongoing new dev work as well. Even just 10 people that's $4 million a year billable. Good for him. I've done a lot of work at agencies over the years. Good to see contractors and clients win for once. Oh, somebody called Dr. Frankenstein because that one just gave me life. I love this story 100%. Officially my favorite story like literally ever, ever, ever. Favorite story 100%. There's so much like undertoned like middle fingers to everyone in it and i love it i love it so for those of you who probably got a little lost because i know it was a little it was a long way to get to home on that one but um essentially one dude worked for a company had a contract with the company the company wanted to end the contract early but he was owed the money for the time that if his contract got terminated early the company said that they weren't going to pay him a dime past the time when they said they were going to cut him off even though he's owed three months which would be a violation of the contract he signed he then asked them if they were going to void that contract and they said i don't care what the contract said we're cutting you off there 
thus leave voids the contract and here's the best part they put it in writing in an email with most likely what i would assume is a header from the company good job now these people treated this guy like shit and it, it was terrible and i and i and like i hate that this guy was treated so poorly i mean like i've done contract work too it sucks these contracts are long and they're obnoxious and i hate them i really do and a lot of them have the no compete clause in them as well and i get that I get that. However, when you void a contract with a non-compete non clause in it, you then open up the ability for that contractor to do whatever he wants. And he had the pre-knowledge that the contract was currently being negotiated. And the, the, the tea I got from this is that to just really stick it to the man, he took everybody. He took everybody everybody the entire dev team for whatever they were working on and started his own business and took millions of dollars from this company because this one person wanted to be a bitch it ah ah it's just so it's so good it's so tasty if you ever watched that one episode of the office where michael quits and he takes like uh he takes pam and ryan and they start their own paper company and then they end up getting bought back by Dunder Mifflin on the terms that uh, they get their jobs back <laughs> because they stole <laughs> all of the clients. That's how this was. That's how this turned out to be. And I loved it. I loved this part. This was a great one. 10 out of 10 would definitely, definitely read this 10 more times. I don't know. This was good to me. I loved it. I want to know what your personal opinion is because I just got all the TA from this. I love it. I loved it. I can say that a million times. But tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. Tell me how you feel about either one of these stories. Second one, obviously, my favorite, probably best one I've done on Malicious Compliance so far. So I thank you guys very much for watching and I thank you very much for following along. If you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe. I don't know what you're waiting for, but you should totally do that now-ish. Yeah, ring the bell so you can get all the up-to-date information and videos and, you know, just get notified. We, we like notifications. That way you can tell when I upload something. Yeah. So thank you guys very much for watching. You guys have been great. You guys have been awesome. And as usual, as always, my friends, stay frosty and keep moving forward.